Hello to everyone. My name is Matteo Chantia from the University of Dundee, and I'm going to present the work titled, as you see in this slide, which was developed together with Marcos Arroyo and Peter Kaiser. As I move down here in the bottom right corner and bring my laser pointer out, I will um, present the outline of my presentation, which I hope you can see. And um, so I will talk about rock burst, the critical state soil mechanics model that we use to reproduce the rock behavior, tunnel support model, and the influence of ball type on the Gabion response. So Kaiser and Kai in 2014 came with the, this definition of rock burst that is damage uh, that occurs in a sudden and violent manner and usually associated with a seismic event. There are three types by cause, uh, and all of them are um, excavation wall damage processes, as you can see in these pictures here. Now, the ACDC came out with an interesting title in the same year, but this is a different story. Uh, so as the music industry was evolving, also in the movies, we had some mining inspired um, uh, productions. Uh, so underground mining was becoming widespread in, in, many, in, in, in many directions. And uh, with that, Rock Burst started to show, um, well, its influence um, and it, it, its problematics. I will show here in this slide uh, some data from the El Teniente mine in Chile, and we see that the Kilotons per day in the mine uh, were uh, slightly increasing, but we initially had very high number of rock bursts. These numbers were so high that caused the shutdown of the mine uh, in the early 1990s. Now, thanks to the technological improvement and introduction of hydrofracturing, uh, it was then uh, possible to um, increase the mine production and decrease the number of rock bursts. So the message is that uh, rock burst prevention is a challenging problem uh, and uh, it's very important in mining engineering. So what causes uh, rock burst? Well, the elastic theory could provide uh, uh, information about stress redistribution. And we know that the deviatoric stresses increase on the, on the wall face uh, because of an excavation. And in particular, at two kilometer depth, the, uh, we could get to 80 megapascals of deviatoric stress on the on the wall face. There are other effects like dynamic solicitations, uh, external dynamic solicitations, and creep effects. Uh, independently on the cause, what is usually observed is uh, the wall um, damage, but then also roof sag and the floor heave. And this is key to the introduction of the uh, Gabion concept. Um, so more detail can be found in uh, Kai's and Kaiser's book. Um, and so without support, there is danger. So the risk to damage people and infrastructure. And, but we can use reinforcement to prevent this to happen uh, and to design this reinforcement that is composed by bolting and face shot crit, we can use some modeling. Now, to reproduce this complex behavior, we could use the Gabion concept that simplifies uh, the whole um, geometry and, and problem. Basically, this roof sag and floor heave are represented by a tangential strain that is squeezing our wall face. And uh, this can be easily modeled because of the uh, simplified geometry and finite elements. Now, independent on the simplification of or, or, uh, introduced by the Gabion concept, uh, we need a good model to reproduce the, the rock behavior if we want realistic uh, results. So for this and for our work, we used a critical state soil model that was uh, modified to account for uh, rock behavior. And basically we need a yield locus that basically tells us the region where we are elastic and where we start uh, yielding. And uh, here is the expression of our yield surface, depending on parameters N and R, that an M 
that uh, rule the shape of the yield surface. Now, um, in the triaxial plane, we see that the initially unbonded material, whose internal variable is P con S, can increase the size of the yield surface thanks to this bonding, bonding related variable. So as the bonding increases, we have a larger elastic domain. Now, looking at these thin sections, we then can say that outside of this shear damaged zone, we have the initial bonding, whereas inside this shear and damaged zone, the bonding will be smaller than the initial value, and actually, in this case, probably close to zero. Also, the elastic properties are affected by the bonding. So higher bonding, we have higher stiffness, uh, so basically, with bonding, we have higher stiffness and strength, which can then decrease how uh, well with uh, plasticity, in particular, the bond damage low will govern how the bonding variable will decrease. And uh, this will be done through deviatoric and volumetric plastic strains. Now, the model can be calibrated using uh, on a sandstone, we see here we can fit the yield surface with um, experimental data from the literature, the post-peak behavior, and the plastic potential uh, thanks to the dilatancy. And we see the model is capturing quite well uh, typical rock behavior. Not only sandstone, but perhaps granite. And we see a good prediction of the model here too. Now that the model is calibrated, as you can you can read in the paper, we then used it to uh, to see the influence of support on our gabion. So, as mentioned earlier, we model our gabion as the square five by five meters. We have three meter bolts. We have initial stress vertical stress conditions. We model shot crit uh, with a surface pressure here on, on, on the wall face, and then we have these four bolts. Tangential strain will, will reproduce this roof sag floor heave effect. Now, um, this is uh, the initial mesh, and uh, with, uh, we used Plaxis as a software. So how do we introduce the bolts? Well, uh, we can model the bolts, and we used uh, elastic properties of uh, concrete and uh, and still, um, but we are in a plane strain condition, so it's important that the strength and stiffness are modified uh, to account for the spacing in the uh, in depth. So there are actual actually there are tutorials that show this in in the software use, but basically it's important to account for this uh, in order to simplify the 2D geometry as we're doing here. So these are the four types of bolts that we analyzed, and we see we have the stiff, strong ones, elastic, the um, nor normal, medium, and soft, weak in green, and the properties in the table. So more detailed again in the paper. So what's the influence on the Gabion response? Here I, in the presentation, I just compare two cases, but uh, basically we see that not so much effect on the gabion capacity. We see that no bolts have a brittle response, uh, and all the other cases, the capacity is similar. We see this type of wedge forming as uh, we increase the tangential strain. Now let's compare the stiff strong case to the uh, soft weak, um, because it's quite interesting, as you can start to see from this image here. What we see is that the stiff strong in the stiff strong case, the bolts start to yield when we're still in the elastic regime of the global Gabion response. On the other hand, the soft weak case shows that the bolts start to yield after the peak. This is interesting because, uh, and we can see here in this last slide, um, it's interesting because the stiff strong case will cause the bolts to yield, and here we see the yield uh, strain, so the local axial deformation uh, with respect to what measured for this bolt here early in, 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 the, in the loading. 
and uh, so we have basically using up all the plastic capacity of the bolts is used up in a region or a moment of loading that is not so useful. So this brings me to the conclusions that um, are listed here. Basically, reinforcement mar marginally enhances the pillar capacity. The reinforcement, however, is useful because it gives an extra post-peak more ductile response. But most importantly, uh, in my opinion, is the relative stiffness between the bolt and the rock is key, in particular when comparing the soft weak and the stiff strong case, we see this uh, effect. So with this, I thank you for your attention and I hope I was within the time limits.